Hello and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be seeing how to control the word object model using the win32com library. So we've seen with this particular library, we can plug in to the VBA object model and control the different VBA, or sorry, not VBA, but Office applications. We've talked using uh, Excel, we've even seen how to use PowerPoint a little bit, but we actually never went over Word. So I'm going to fill in that gap right now, and we're going to see how we can control a Word document from Python. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to a Wikipedia page right here, and we're going to scrape some of the content on this particular uh, page and put it into a Word document in a nice, easy to, to understand format. So with that being said, um, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, we've used this library before, but it's just the same. We're going to do import win32com.client as win32. And so this will allow us to plug in to the Windows API and control different COM objects. Now, the particular COM object that we want to work with is the Word application. And so how do we create or get an instance of that application? Well, currently there is no instance of the application open, so we would have to create a new instance. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a new instance of Word and we're gonna use <clears throat> early binding. And so with early binding, we basically get a little uh, file that's made for us that will allow us to um, create and understand that particular object and the methods and properties belonging to it. And so what we'll do is we'll create a new variable. We'll call it word app. I'm going to call the win32 uh, module. I'm going to call the generate cache method. And then we're going to call the ensure dispatch method. And then we pass through a string, which is the application that we want to create an instance of. In this case, it's called word application. And so when I run this, you know, this is kind of how I do our little sanity check. And so it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. And now we have a uh, Word application object that we can work with. But by default, um, you can see that there is no uh, visual component of it. So we're going to make sure that it's visible. And so we're going to take and make the app visible. And then to do that, we're going to take our word application, we're going to call the visible property and set that equal to true. So if you've used the object model inside of Word, everything is identical. We are simply taking it and putting it in a Python format and something that is syntactically correct in Python. The methods and properties are all the same, it's just we need to make sure that the syntax is correct now that we're using it in Python. And so now that we made sure it's visible, uh, sorry, visible, let's add a document because right now there wouldn't be one there. And so we'll store that object in a, um, <clears throat> what is it? Uh, we'll, we'll add one. And so we'll call uh, the word app. We'll call the documents collection and then we'll call the add method. And so when I run this, perfect. So now you can see down here, the word application has been brought up. I now have a new document that I can start playing with. Now, we have an app, sorry, we have a document. Sometimes we might wanna understand how this document works, so we might wanna look at the methods and properties that belong to it. So in order to do that, we need to basically create a little um, pi object file that will contain all the information related to it. So it's basically running this line of code, but we're gonna create a specific instance of a Word document variable using early binding. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create, it's not really recreating it, but we're going to be grabbing it and then we're going to be using early binding to get the information about it. So here is create a early binding version of our document. And then this is just more for demonstration purposes. So that way, if you were curious and say, hey, what are the methods and properties about this particular object? We can simply go into it. We'll do generate cache. We'll do ensure dispatch. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Word app, I'm gonna go into the documents collection, and then I'm gonna grab the first document because there's only one. And after we run this little line of code, what we can do now 
is we can call the help function and get some information about our particular um, object. And so here, uh, use the help function with the word document. <clears throat> and so what we'll do is we'll call the help function and then we'll pass through our word doc object. And when you do this, you get some information on this particular object. So it tells you that it is a generated pie object and it's a document object, and then you can get some information about the methods and uh, properties about it. And so this is kind of like a little cheat sheet, if you want to think about it, of all the methods that belong to a document object. And it's kind of giving you an idea of what the parameters that it's expecting and things along that nature. Now you could technically also get, um, <clears throat> I think it's like, uh, what is it? Some of the objects within that particular object. So this one is a uh, grab the paragraph object inside of a document object. So remember, there's kind of like this little hierarchy. So this would be kind of going to that next hierarchy. So it would be calling the word doc object. We'll get the get attribute method, and then I'll pass through the word para graphs Where is it? Mm. and so this gives you uh, an instance of the paragraphs class object and the information about it so it's a nice way again to kind of go to that next level where it now has the information about the objects inside of it so this again was more for demonstration purposes and just understanding how you can manipulate these com objects once you've created an instance of them. So this is just making the process of understanding how they work a little bit easier um, and a little bit more real in a sense. But for our purposes, that's really all we needed. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually get to the part where we do the scraping. So the goal is to take one of these tables, or I think it's not the table, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go through and get all the links to each one of these images. So if we inspect this, you'll notice that each one of these has a source attribute that belongs to the image tag. And that source attribute um, is actually taking you to the file that contains this image, so the URL that basically contains it. And so we're gonna scrape each one of those links and then store them in a table inside of Word. And so what we'll do from here is we're going to say from BS4 import beautiful soup. And then we're going to import request. So our request module. And so what we'll need to do is we'll need to make sure that we get our, our, our or basically make our request. We'll store it in a variable called HTML code. I'll call the request module and then the get method. I'll make sure to pass through the URL. It's just simply this one. I'm a big fan of Star Wars, so that's what we kind of get stuck with. And then I'm going to call the content property. And so this will return all the, the code basically that belongs at that page. So request the page. That makes sense, right? We've done that before. And then we're going to dump that code into a beautiful soup object that we can then leverage for parsing. So dump the code in a beautiful soup parser. And then we'll store it in a new variable called soup. That's just kind of convention. We'll call it beautiful soup object. We'll pass through the HTML code. And then we need to specify a parser. Well, it's HTML code, so we can just specify that it's an HTML parser. We have LXML and some other ones, but in this case, we know it's HTML, so why not just use that one? Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go and find all the image tags. So let's, uh, where is it? Let's look for all the image tags. And we'll store those in a variable as well. We'll call it images. And so we'll call our soup object. We'll do a find all function operation. And then we will look for the image tags. And so if I do this, I should get back a huge list. And I forgot to actually print it out. Yeah, so we get back a huge list. There's obviously a bunch of photo, uh, photos on this particular page that, that kind of makes sense. Um, from here, let's actually go 
and make a word table in our document. Now I want my word table to have enough rows to basically uh, store each one of these image links. And so I'm gonna create one variable before I actually create the word table, which will be the number of rows in my table. Well, the number of rows is just gonna be the number of images that we have. Because if I have enough images, I have that I know how many rows that I need. So get the number of rows needed, that's all. And so I'm gonna say number of rows equals the length of images. And so this should come back with 49. So there's gonna be 49 rows in our table, which sounds like a lot, but once you see it, it's not too bad. So now let's add a table to the document and set the style. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a table to the document. And so we're gonna call it a word table, and then we're gonna call our word document. We're gonna go into the tables collection and then call the add method. And so where do we want it? Well, the first parameter is a range object. Well, I just want it to be on the first paragraph. And so basically the one that I have currently selected, that would be our first paragraph. And so we're gonna call our word document object. We're gonna go into the paragraphs collection, grab the first paragraph, and then we're gonna call the range property that belongs to that paragraph. So this will basically specify, hey, this is the range where I want to put this particular table. The next parameter will be the number of rows, and then the next parameter after that will be the number of columns. So I want it to have 49 rows and two columns, and I want it to be at uh, paragraph one. And so once you do this, you'll see something. Um, it's here, unfortunately, the style's all kind of like messed up. So we're not actually um, seeing the style. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the style so it's something we can actually see. <laughs> so we'll call our word table object. We'll then call the style property. And then this one is gonna equal a string variable. And so this, you just kind of have to know off the top of your head. Uh, it's grid table one light and then accent one. This is something where if I'm really curious on how to do it, I'll usually just do um, a macro recording or I'll go to the actual, um, God, what is it? Uh, MSDN website, just because they usually have it documented because there's like 40 or 50 styles and um, it's not kind of realistic to, um, to remember them all. <laughs> so that's just kind of my little note on that. Okay, so now we have a table inside of our particular document, so that's great. Now we need to start iterating through each one of these rows and columns and populating a link into it. Well, the first thing that we probably should do is put the headers in there. So um, that's the easiest. We'll just populate the header rows. And so we'll call the word table object. If we wanna work with individual cells, we call the cell method, and then we need to pass through the row and then the column that we wanna work with. So this is specifying work with cell column one, row one. And then we'll call the range property and then the text property. And then we pass through the text that we want to belong to that particular um, cell. And so in this case, I want link number. And then the next thing I'll go to is cell. I want one and then I want column two in this example. And then again, it's identical, but now I want this to just be equal to link. Initially, I thought it was zero for some reason, and I kept looking, I'm like, why is it all the way down here? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't start at zero, it starts at one. So learn from my mistake in, that, in other words. Um, so right now you can see that we have the, the cells populated, so that's great. Um, so now we kind of go to that next and final part, which is looping through all the images and then populating them in the necessary um, rows. So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> Let's give myself a little space so I can make sure you guys can see it. Um, loop through each image, grab the link, and fill out the row. That's how I like to think about it. So uh, in this example, instead of just doing a regular for loop, we're gonna do an enumeration function that wraps our images uh, list this way we can define an index variable. So we're gonna say for index image in enumerate, and then we're gonna pass through our images list. 
And so now we're gonna have for each element in our list an index and the actual value itself. This will come in handy when we wanna go and actually populate the individual cells because now we can leverage that index and increment it as we're going along. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's populate each cell. And so the first one is gonna have the link itself. Well, no, it's the link number itself. So the first one is gonna be word table. And then we're gonna go to the cell method. We're gonna do index plus two, plus two. Remember, we already got one right up here. And then one. And then this one is gonna start at zero. So we'll do range, and then we'll do the text property, and then link, just like that. And then I gotta make sure everything I'm passing through is of the right data type. So I just like to make sure it's an index string because I wanna make sure it's a string that I'm populating in that. Most time it doesn't really matter, but you've gotta be careful when you start taking Python data types and putting them into an Office application because Office might not recognize that data type. So you just gotta be a little bit careful about that. So we'll do word table, cell, index plus two. I want the second column, I want the range, I want the text property. And then with here, I'm gonna do the image that I'm currently on in my loop. I'm gonna grab that source attribute. I wanna make sure it's a valid link, so I'm gonna do a replace. I'm gonna replace, where is it? Raw, the two forward slashes. I want that to be um, the HTTPS colon two forward slashes. So you notice here, it's like that little, those two little forward slashes, I know that might be really hard to see. I wanna replace that with HTTPS colon two forward slashes because that will make it a valid link. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap this over here so we can see it happen in real time. Um, and I think we should be good. So if I run this, you can see that it now populated that particular table. And so if I, do this, these all should be valid links. And so it's taking you there. Um, that's probably not the best one that I wanna do, but you can see that they're now taking you to valid links. Now, something you could do as well is now that we've kind of done it, I mean, you could have saved the pictures using Python. You could actually use VBA as well in order to loop through this and then go to each one of those links and save the document. Each one of them is valid personally. I hate to say this, but I would probably just do it in, in Python. I don't think I would have the extra component of doing it inside of VBA. But this is kind of showing you that you can take information that you currently have inside of a Python application and directly put it into a Word document. So it does come in handy. Um, and then it also you can kind of do it the other way around, which is you have a Word document with all this information. You might want to load that document into Python. Well, this is an easy way to do it. We can now take all of our text, get all that information and put it into an easy to read format. So especially like if you had a table in Word, that's going to be 10 times easier. You could just loop through that table and then put each one of those cell values inside of like a list or a NumPy array or something like that. So definitely some ways that you can play around with it. It's kind of just exploring and seeing how it really fits your um, overall goals in a sense. So with that being said though, that actually does conclude our video. So if you have any questions about this particular topic inside of the Win32.com library, please make sure to put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, we appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thank you again for watching everybody. Next topic, I think we're doing Splinter, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think it's Splinter, because I have to do Splinter before I can keep doing my TD Ameritrade stuff. Um, there's a component in it that it's just going to make sense if we have Splinter. So uh, we will see everybody in the next video.